the historical spiritual inspiration for the work of contemplative musicianship and music thanatology finds one of its primary resources in Benedictine Cluniac life, particularly in manuscripts of the 11th century. And we read those documents and say, what can we learn from these today? In their infirmary documents and in their value system, you know, they don't say even the day of death, so they don't use the Latin morir. They use a different word, and the word transitus, a movement, passage, and it implies motion and evokes this whole notion that in the human biography is an entire series of rites of passages. In the Christian tradition, we, we have the notion that um, our biological death is not an end. It is not a finality, but in fact a movement, a transitus, a movement, passage, a voyage, journey. And if we give any validity to nature and to what happens in the world, we see things blooming and coming into first little precious tender sprouts and and, and little green delicate things and blooming into fruits and flowers and vegetables. And then coming of age and slowly kind of dying and decomposing and it's all part of one cycle. But I love the fact that the Benedictines and the Cluniac culture accepted death into the human life cycle. They didn't try and separate it from daily life or perception. They looked to what it can give us and teach us. Where have I been really loving? Where have I missed the boat in loving? Are there any acts or conditions or postures of forgiveness that could bear fruit right now? How does that blossom out into the world, into the universe?